track you. Yeah. They track your ancestors. They know who you are. 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 No way that I can have this much damn royal blood. There's no way possible. You see what I'm saying? Because they have taught us history backwards and reverse. I'm showing you these real kings, queens of the royal bloodline, and they look at look just like you and I. Yeah, really. First time you ever seen what? Picture of King James. Oh wow. The black picture of King James. No, they picture. Oh, see, there you go. So right here, the English settlers in New England, for example, spoke of the American Indians as what? Moors. <laughs> spoke of them as Moors. So American Indians was Moors. So here is the article. It's called Digging for the Red Roots by Mahar L. He says, my name is Mahar, you know, Abdullah or Zach L. And I'm a Cherokee Black for the American Indian who is Muslim, a Muslim. I am known as Eagle Sun Walker. I serve as a pipe chariot um, on carrier warrior of the Northeastern Band of Cherokee Indians in New York City. There are other Muslims in our group. For the most part, not many people are aware of the Native American who connected with Islam that began over one thousand years ago by some of the early Muslim travelers who visited us. Some of these Muslim travelers ended up living among our people. For most Muslims and non-Muslims of today, this type of information is unknown and it has never been mentioned in any of the history books. Exactly. Well, it's mentioned in my book, First World Order. There are many documents, treaties, legislation, and resolution that was passed between 1600 and 1800s that show Muslims were in fact now, when they talk about Muslim, they talk about Moors, who is in fact here and very active in the community in which they live. Treaties such as the peace and friendship that was signed on what? The Delaware River in the year 1787. Or was it signed? Where? It wasn't signed in the Kingdom of Morocco. It was signed here in the first state. This is why Delaware became the first state, because this is where the treaty was signed at. And this is why all of the presidents since Clinton been saying, all right, uh, the longest standing treaty is this treaty of peace and friendship. Why did every, why do every president since, since, now that's the first time I remember them saying it, it's Clinton. They could have said it before, but Clinton, start from Clinton to, to, to um, Trump, you know what I'm saying, all said that the longest standing treaty is the treaty of peace and friendship. Now we know that it was signed here in America. Al Morocco. Al Morocco. Right. So America is Al Morocco. All right. Uh, America. This is the same name. This is why they've been trying to fool us. So that's why it's the United States of America. And right now that's the United States. What have a superior position? America has a superior position yes. in the United States. That's why they of us. We're not of them. Remember, this is why I seal this first when you flip the dollar over. All right? If we just put the read left to right. So if I read left to right, then that seal is what? First. You get it. You see? This is all the tricks they've been pulling. So right here, it says it was signed on the Delaware River in the year 1787. There's the signature of who? Abdullah Kat and who? Muhammad Ibn Abdullah. Bay. That's who that is. So let's, let's see. Ibn Abdullah Bay. Ibn Abdullah Bay. Oh, Ibn Abdullah. Let's see. All right? Let's go up right quick. Because you're talking about, remember, they are just talking about that the Cherokee was in New York. 
So right here, recorded history of the Cherokee shoulder living in places at different times. There's the linguistic evidence that the Cherokee was involved in another major migration before recorded history. The Cherokee language is linguistically related to the language of the Iroquois, whose historical homeland was the area in what is now what? Up in New York State. So the Cherokee was from New York too. Remember, they signed it on the Delaware River. So right, this suggests that the people they've known as Cherokee was once part of the Iroquois and probably a result of defeat in warfare moved to the southern Appalachian area, and that was North Carolina. But this is where they um, had them do. Um, Andrew Jackson, who was also another mulatto, made them move from um, North Carolina into Oklahoma, which now we get on Tulsa, Oklahoma, which was known as Black Wall Street. That was formed by the Cherokee and the Creek people who he moved from between North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. The Trail of the Tears. The Trail of the Tears, exactly. Exactly. That was us, too. Another source of identity identifies the Iroquois having migrated from the lower Midwest. This means that the Cherokee could have separated from the other Iroquois by branching off of the east as the main body migrated to the northeast. The Iroquois or the Hasdido on Sony was a powerful northeast Native American confederacy who lived primarily in Ontario, Canada, and upstate New York for well over 4,000 years. Technically, Iroquois refers to the language rather than a particular tribe. But early on, it began to refer to as a nation of Indians made up of five tribes, including the Seneca, um, Onondaga, Onida, the Cayuga, and the Mohawk. So how did the Mohawk look? You know what I'm saying? How did they look? I'm going to show you. Other trials of Iroquois um, stock that was not a part of the Confederacy was the Hurry, um, the Huey, um, the Tobi, non Tati, the Neutral Nation of Ontario, the Hiri, and the um, Conestoga in Ohio and Pennsylvania, and the uh, Mahari. Not a Mahari, not a Mahari, is right here in No County. Going towards Elizabeth City, that's, that area is Mahari, is the Mahari area. So they still here in North Carolina. The Nottaway, the Tuscarora, the Cherokee of Virginia and Carolina. The name Iroquois is a French derivative of disputed origin and meaning, but it may possibly come from the Algonquin word, um, um, Irin uh, uh, Nako, which means real snake. The Algonquin tribe denotes hostile tribes as snakes. They call themselves the Hasdenosani, which means people of the Long House. So, how did the Mohawk look? Uh oh, look at the Mohawk. Oh, yeah, very swapping looking. <laughs> yes, especially with the ones with the braids in the hair. A little afro there. Yeah, this is how they look and dress. This is the original painting of the black Mohawk Indians in Morris Gar. Can y'all see the guard? Got the sword, got the axe, she got all of that. What's up? We ready for battle. So the founding fathers did not find anything. They went to the black Indians. They were coordination. See the assistance to break away from the chief. George the Third, who was the Moor. So they came to the Moors here, asked us for help. We gave them and granted them help. They absurded us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now we're in a position that we're in, and they took over the our the drug government with the de facto government, and then we integrated with them and lost completely everything. Because we followed the law into the king. I ain't going to keep on him because he started waking up in the, in the last portion. The Iroquois Nation taught them their system of government, and the only part that so called founding fathers left out was the matriarch. Uh oh. Black Indian women ruled the Iroquois nations because the Iroquois is part of the Algonquin, which is Washington. It's matriarch. So, right here. 
The first inhabitants among the um, North American continents were the Native Americans. Mainstream historians say that the Native Americans migrated from um, Siberia in the North and South American continent. Um, this occurred thousands of years ago, allegedly about 12,000 years ago, y'all. Um, they came across the Bering Strait. Um, we're talking about between 8,000 to 12,000 years ago. Back then, there were semi nomadic people of hunter gatherers. They formed agricultural and um, sedentary civilization. They formed tons of tribes like the Quran, the Apache, the Cherokee, the Sioux. The Delaware, which is the Delaware Moors, and the Napi. Um, the Iroquois with subdivisions into other tribes like the Seneca, Onondaga, uh, Onita, Mohawk, and Paducah. The Iroquois advanced in advanced social structure, which influenced the formation of the United States. So, who influenced the formation of the United States? It's the Iroquois. It was the Iroquois. And be what well, to be a democratic republic. This is Dr. Robert Haraniam from his book entitled Founding Fathers, Secret Societies, Freemasons, Illuminati, Rosicrucian, and the Decoding of the Great City. All right, so this is the fraud. All right, it says Dr. Heronium of Renonimus is respected by administrators. He's a PhD and his research is valued by many historians. Robert wrote that the founding fathers took not only influence from the mystery religion, which is the ancient Egyptian genre, Mystery School. Robert wrote that the founding fathers accepted concepts from the Native American Iroquois tribes in creating the American government and the great seal of America. So, who is that seal? That seal on this side is the Iroquois seal, the Chickapoy, which is the Cherokee seal. That is the Cherokee seal, right? That's our seal. The seal on this side, please show. The seal on this side, which is the right side, is whose seal? The seal that we made for them, the album. All right? So they can do. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the same considered before, like, so uh, our side is the dominant side. Isn't it the same? That's what it says to me. But isn't it the same um, uh, consideration when you go into a more simple? We got the. Uh, the and then uh, yeah. the banner on right side. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And there's a exactly. 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 So when you see the flag, when you see the flag, I'll show you what he talks about the banner and the flag together. Thank you. <coughs> 
So right here, the airport created a complex democratic like Native American civilization. Benjamin Franklin spread the idea to other founding fathers. All right. And Robin also writes that the Masonic rituals, all right, are similar to the Iroquois. Matter of fact, 80% of the rituals of the Iroquois is now in the Masonic lodges in the United States, which is once again Egyptian based on Osiris. So here it is. This is the 100th Congress, second session. All right, this is the House of Congress Resolution 331. In the Senate of the United States, it says October the 5th, September the 26th, 1988. This is what it says. Check this. It says to announce the contribution of the Iroquois Confederation or Confederacy excuse me, of Nations to the development of the United States Constitution. This is in Congress. This is in Congress, y'all. And it reaffirms the continuing government to government relationship between Indian tribes and the United States established in the Constitution. <laughs> Yeah. So, who helped them? And then they betrayed us. If this is the Empire State Building, New York is called the Empire State. So, it traces the origin of the Empire State, the name of the Empire State. Let's, let's trace it. So let's read this portion of tracing the term Empire State, New York Times. This is the New York Times, y'all. This article came out March 28, 1999. What it says? Bronx, seat of the empire. The Bronx, the same boogie down. <laughs> Rocks, where hip hop came out of, was once the seat of the empire. Ooh. Anybody told you this before? Mm -hmm. I know. It makes sense though, because a lot of knowledge that you know came out of New York. In New York. And why? <laughs> right. So anyone can read Washington's written reference to New York at the seat of the empire. What was Washington, what was George Washington saying that just for the seat of the empire? Bronx, New York. The phrase seat of empire or of the empire has much currency in the early modern world. The political philosopher James Harrington used it in 17th century and various authors repeated it in 18th century concerning Monte, uh, um, Montez Cuban, John Adams, and Adam Smith, the last suggestion in The Wealth of Nations, 1776, and that the seat of empire, meaning the British, no, not the British, first century, it's the Moors, right? might soon migrate to America. 
So here it is. So George Washington referred to it once as the seat of the York or the seat of the empire. And this is the letter to George Washington from George Washington to Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Bay, the Sultan of Morocco. Wow. Great and magnanimous friend. Since the date of the letter, which the late Congress by their president and addressed to your imperial majesty. You're going to hear so much past kissing in this. The United States of America has thought proper to change their government and institute a new, agreeable to the Constitution of which I have the honor herewith to enclose a copy. The time necessary employed in the audience for task and the disarrangement occasioned by such great group peaceful in resolution will apologize and account for my majesty's not having received those regular advice marks. What's those regular advice marks? That's the money. Where's my money at? <laughs> Attention from the United States, which the friendship and magnanimity, magnanimity of your conduct towards them for the reason to expect. The United States have unanimously appointed me to supreme executive authority in this nation. Your Majesty's letter of August 17, 1788, which by reason of the dissolution of the last of the late government, remains unanswered. In other words, you, you, you ain't write this back. You don't know. What, what, what are y'all supposed, supposed to do? You know? <laughs> I received letters from which your Imperial Majesty has been so kind to write in favor of the United States to the brochures of Tunis and Tripoli. And I present to you the sincere acknowledgement and thank of the United States for this important mark of your friendship for them. We greatly regret the hostile disposition of those regencies towards this nation who has never injured them is not to be removed on terms of our power to comply with. Within our territories, there are no mines that of gold or silver and this young nation just receiving from the waste and dissolution of a long war have not as of yet had time to acquire riches by agriculture and commerce. In other words, we can't give you money because we ain't got that joint because we've been fighting over here with the cement. <laughs> but our soil is bountiful and our people are industrious. And we have reason to flatter ourselves that we shall gradually become useful to our friends. You see how much ass kissing is in here? <laughs> But no need for y'all to come in war with us, too. We've just been through a long war. <laughs> the encouragement which your majesty has been pleased generously to give to our um, commerce with your dominion, the punctuality in which you have caused the treaty, which treaty? The treaty of peace and friendship between the United States and Morocco. All right. Which us to be observed and just and generous measures taken in case of Captain Proctor, make a deep impression on the United States and confirm their respect for and attached to your imperial majesty. It gives me great pleasure to have the opportunity of assuring your majesty that while I remain at the head of this nation, I shall not cease to promote every measure that may con um, conduce to the friendship and harmony which so happily subsist between your empire and them, and shall esteem myself happy in every occasion of convincing your majesty of your high sense, which is in common with the whole nation. I entertain the magnanimity, wisdom, and benevolence of your majesty. May almighty bless your imperial majesty our great and magnanimous friend with his constant guide and protection. George Washington. 
Now, if this was going over into Africa, then why does it say city of New York? It's in the first. Ah! 1789, you The Sultan of Morocco was in Bronx, New York. That was the seat of the empire. Wow. You get it? Right. Against another group of wars. Yeah, but they had to the ass kiss the wars that was here. Yeah. <laughs> right. The real George Washington was one of us. The fake George Washington was Adam Weissall, who was known as Westington. But Weissall actually was the right from. I'll show you that. So, that was in New York City, y'all, which would have been Manhattan. So, I mean, they ended up one skip and <clears throat> jumped. So, this is fake. This is not giving that builder. But how many of that builder Bay? That ain't Thomas Jefferson. And Europeanized them or whiteized him. And whiteized even that builder Bay. This is the real Ibn Abdullah Bey, who was there as a sultan in Bronx, New York, in the seat of the empire. This is who signed the Treaty of Peace first between the United States and Morocco, El Morocco, which is America. Everybody get this? This is the trick knowledge that they've been using. The tricks is over. The tricks are over. No longer do we have the tricks. Sultan, Saeed, Ibn. Oh, let's go back. Come on now. Stop that. All right. Sultan, Saeed, Muhammad, Ibn, Abdullah. This is Abdullah Bey. This is him who signed the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. As you can see, Moorish God, just like the Mohawks, right? Who also was from New York. <laughs> You see this? So this is how you can mistake in this for this. You can't. They try to play this, and they always is not. That's why I go and do my research and find out who's, who's who in history. Because they've been lying to us so much. Well, just like the, the founder of the House of Olive White, they didn't have the House of Olive White come out. Right. So right here, Saidi Muhammad the 17th, Ibn Abdullah is the emperor who signed the Moroccan Treaty. See? 1787 Treaty, Morocco and the United States. Not America, but America and Morocco is the same. He was the grandson of Muli. Right? When you, when you, when you hear the Italian talk about fuck the Muli, this is what they talk about. Talk about us being Moors. Muli is the term of Muli Ishmael. And how he ran all up through Sicily and Italy. The Hannibal. Thus, we can see they did not only did the Moroccan Treaty of 1787 apply to us, but the government would sign the treaty, and the other treaties was controlled and ran by us. The dark skinned, woolly haired Moors of Sudan, Mandy, descent. And Cherokee, he said, which is not Indian. But I have to show you that because the Cherokee was on the Iroquois, who was in New York, along with the Moroccan, who was along the Mohawks, it was one and the same people. See, one and the same people. This is the trick they've been using all the time. Keep changing names in history. So we find in 1790, the public was shocked to find out that the Indians wore Turkish turbans and Islamic crescents in guard. The Creek chieftain, Ho Ti Mo Ti Tez Ti Miki, or Sam Perryman, possessed regalia consistent of a fez. You can read this in the book, O World Roots of the Cherokee. Get the book, Old World Roots of the Cherokee. So the Cherokee rode 
more rebellion, the same exact rebellion that you see with the Mohawks. Same exact rebellion that you seen with Muhammad Ibn Abdul. We already seen that the Cherokee were Muslims, Moors. You see, Muhammad Ibn Abdul was a what? A Moor, Muslim. There it is. Keep showing you over and over again. No. You mean like um, Gates? Yeah, I mean, Harry Lewis skipped Gates. He skips over a whole lot of information. I know that. But you mean, what is he getting? He gets money. Jesse Jackass, he gets money. Al Sharpton dude, he gets money. That's what they do. They get money. They get millions of dollars to keep us from knowing who we know and keep the bullshit. Black Lives Matter in front of us. Jesse Jackson is horrible. Have y'all seen him last time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who? Even his son, yeah. even his own son said, well, um, told um, his own son told um, Steve Coakley some years ago, before, you know, way years ago, over, over 20 years ago. Steve just passed in 2011. Oh, um, I think. April 4th, 2011, somewhere around here. But years ago, he told Steve, he said, of um, course, Steve brought up the fact that Jesse Jackass was involved in Martin Luther King's death. Right? And he smeared blood on his shirt. What? Yeah, he, he, smeared, he smeared the blood on his shirt. And then went to the CBS and was like, I was the last to hold Martin wow. in my arms. Yeah, Dick Gregory spoke about it, but Steve Coakley spoke about it um, um, around that prior or right around that same exact time, right? So Steve Coakley and um, Dick Gregory both spoke about the same thing about J.C. Jackass doing it. So his own son told Steve Coakley, he said, "Whatever my father did, but I did consequences." Yeah. That's his own son. Yeah, that's that's his own son. son. Right, so but here could go old world movies of the Cherokee. How DNA, DNA York, ancient alphabets and religion explains the origin of America's largest Indian nation. Who are they? This by Donna Gates. Who are the Cherokee? Who are they? Anybody know? I know. <laughs> exactly. All right, so let me. Show you right here. Who they are. Uh-oh. What, what did they say Noble Drali was raised at? He was raised up on the Cherokee Reservation. Oh my gosh. Look, they don't, see, that's the thing. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And see, they're so busy trying to be something other than that because they don't know their ancestry. So they just want to say, oh, we're just Moors. Well, that's fine. We got them to go further back than that. Go further back than that. You know, so um, find how far back it goes. Right. So, right, these are the books that I was talking about the five Negro presidents and the six black presidents. Right? Black blood, white mass. Mm -hmm. Okay. There you so, go, right there. On that show. <laughs> right. So, right here, let's look at it. It says, Vaughn and other claim Thomas Jefferson's mother, Jane Randolph Jefferson. Now, Jane Randolph, she's related to Peyton Randolph, who's also related to Beverly Pastor Randolph. And Beverly Pastor Randolph was a Moor. Right or wrong? Right. Okay, you ain't been doing your study. It's all right. We're going to get it. Thomas Jefferson's mother, Jane Randolph Jefferson, was of what? Mixed race ancestry. 
So I don't know how you get this. <laughs> the academic consensus do not support such claims in her recent analysis of historical evidence about the Hemings and the Je Jeffersons, for example. The scholar um, Annette Gordon Reed makes no claim of African ancestry in the Randolph family, but that's a lie. It was Moors. Matter of fact, John Adams accused Jefferson of being a half Indian, half nigger, half Frenchman. That's a lot of goddamn halves. Actually, that's a third. Ain't no halves. He's a third engine. He's a third nigga. And he's a third Frenchman. It was all dark. Okay? And it was all dark. Yep. Thank you. Born to a mulatto father. What kind of damn? Yeah. Oh, that was his mama. Now that's his daddy. How you get that? Yeah. You don't get that. It says mulatto or slave and half breed Indian squaw. This to the birth of mulatto and Indian allegedly well known in the neighborhood where he raised. He was raised at y'all. Everybody knew he was raised under the Moorish ancestry. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 indeed. Yes, yes, indeed. All right, so. Now let me get. Well, that's how you like the black women. Exactly. Exactly. That's why he was all up on salad. <laughs> <laughs> on salad. All up in the salad. So, right here. Show you. Right. This is a better picture of King George III. You can look at him. And know that he got that he's probably is a mulatto. It's when they had like a lot more fair skin mixed people back in the day. Yeah. Now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's more mulatto now than well, like fair skin, like passable white, you know? Right. Like a, a, a mixed person. Like yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, it was more than that. They just bumped them off and started calling them some other things like that. These are the Turks. These are the Turks, y'all. They look like any Turks that you see today? Exactly. He did spoke the Moorish Empire historical. Um, what is that? The Pompeian by Bridget Meekins. All right, so here it is. So, let's look at it right quick. This is Cherokee and who? Venetian DNA connection. Hold up. Cherokee and Venetian DNA connection. Okay, well, who are the Venetians? The Cherokee are an important connection between the old world and the new world. There are many names that the Cherokee are related to. Number one is what? Venetian. Number two is what? More. Oh! <laughs> oh! 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 So when you said that you got Cherokee in your family, you mean Cherokee got you in their blood. Because there was more. There was Phoenician. There was who? Burr. Cuny. That was Mongolian. Yeah, that's Mongolian um, gene. Are you 
talking about the people who came from the Barren Strait. They came down. Into, uh, yeah. Okay. Right. Right. I didn't know we. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean we. Right. Mm -hmm. So here, Cuny, the Canaanites, Jewish, Belongian, Carthaginian, Turks. Hold on, I just showed you the Turks. Greeks, Mesopotamian, Egyptian, North America, the North Africa. The Nanako, the Guinea, the Cuban. Now, this is called the Guinea. Well, the Italians call who the Guinea? They call the Negro the Guinea. The fucking Guinea. Oh, they do. The fucking Moonies. Them are all names that they use referring to us. But I showed you where the Moonie name came from. came from Moonie Ishmael, who's the grandfather of the person who signed the Declaration of Peace and Friendship between the United States and Morocco. Cuban and Portuguese. And Portuguese. So this is the lineage, yo. And Creole. Creole. So this is who the Cherokee makes up of. Now, this is the same bloodline that is in my bloodline. All the exact same people. So if I got all the exact same people in my bloodline, then how the hell I can't be a Cherokee? Right. <laughs> when I got the exact same bloodline, you see how stupid that is? Mm. That's, that's, that's how stupid this is, bro. So I see if you want to straighten it out. Yeah. Because um, anybody that wants, I'm going to put this out on the um, Anybody that wants to battle me in any historical information, please come. And please come correct. All right? And we'll, um, as um, Dr. John Henry Clark says, um, I only debate my peers. Anyone else, I'll teach. Mm. Journal of the House of Representatives, 1789-1790. This is the Huguenots. Remember I told you about them? Here it is. A petition was presented to the House of the Soldier Free Moors, subjects of the Emperor of Morocco, and resident to this state, paying, I'm praying that in case they shall commit any um, fault amendment to be brought to justice that they are subjects to a prince in alliance with the United States of America, they be tried under the same law as the citizens of this state, all right, who would be liable to be, uh, I can't say that word, and not under the Negro Act, which was received and read. So they don't want to be under the Negro Act. Because well, that would mean a uh, time for slavery, Nicholas. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's what they mean. So this document say a petition was presented to the House from the soldiery free moors, subjects of the Emperor of Morocco, in other words, of America. All right, this is why American citizens, that's who we are. We're not United States citizens. We are American citizens of the capital C, all right, or American nationals. And residents in this state, we're not federalized any shape, form, or fashion, and you don't fall up under the 14th Amendment for the Prophet Middle Ground, he said the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment wouldn't even be necessary for the redemption of our people. What is your nationality? That's what is redemption for you and I. And he was raised up on the Cherokee Reservation, so uh, um, I don't understand why um, Negroes got such a problem with talking about tribal connection when Prophet Middle got that information in the books in the 101 and the 102 of the Moorish on questionnaire with children in the Americas. Well, if you look at it, everything's based off a of tribal connection anyway, like yeah. families, schools, your friends. You base everything off a of tribal connection, Thank even you. your food, even your clothing. Thank you. Brother, I don't know what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. Foolishness. That's what's going on. Foolishness. And they don't want you to identify with your tribal connection because they believe that that's going to take you away from being a Moor. No, that's why you say, I'm a Washington Moor. Or I'm a Cherokee Moor. Or I'm an Iroquois Moor. Whatever it is, a Lenny Lenape Moor. A Nanakote Moor. A Delaware Moor. Whatever the Moor is, you're a Moor. Okay? That ain't going to take us away from anything. Hell, matter of fact, that would unify us and let us know family. You know? But see, they, they seem to be trying to 
stop that from happening. So right here. Of course. Yeah. The reason why the Moors in the southern United States were brainwashed out of our Moorish nationality and into believing that we were all descendants of slave purchased in Africa was in order for the southern European plantation owners to what? Number one, to get around the Moroccan Treaty with America and England, which would not allow them to enslave Moors. Two, to take our land in the south. Three, kidnap and enslave free Moors in the slave states under the um, Fugitive Slave Law Acts. Four, to take us from under the treaties signed by America, which said that the original inhabitants of the land shall be admitted into the Union as soon as possible. And in the meantime, they were to be protected in their right to property, persons, and way of life. This is the Louisiana Purchase Treaty with this on um, Spain for Florida, 1819, and the Treaty for Mexico, which will be in the next issue. Because our Moorish ancestors assisted America in their bid for independence, and we were the first to recognize her independence, America is obligated to assist us in our bid for independence and self-determination in this time and in this day and time. Have they done that? No. 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 No, they don't want to do that. They're still slave. So if they still slave, you know, they don't want to try to get out of that shit. <laughs> 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 Alright, let's that's, that's how they feel about it, y'all. For real. So according to European, you are not part of no Indian nation if you don't have a legitimate ancestor on the Dolls Road. This is what they say, right? So you need to go to Oklahoma Historical Society. That's the name of the website, Oklahoma Historical Society. And what you want to do is go to the final Dolls Road. D A W E S, DOS Road. The final DOS Road. So, the Oklahoma what? DOS, oh, Oklahoma Historical Society. Oklahoma Historical Society. So, Decided is Francis. This is the name of Francis. Last name. All right. This is who the name is named after Francis. The earliest form of hereditary surnames in Scotland. Scotland was the patronymic surname, which was derived from the father's given name, and the matronymic surname, which was derived from the mother's given name. Right, so we come down. Francis is a surname, excuse me, a patriotic surname which belongs to the category of hereditary surname. All right, the name surname was originally derived from the famous religious figure Saint Francis of Assisi. The Francis family was established in um, Derbyshire uh, prior to the Norman invasion of England in 1066. Now remember, we watched the Black Knight, Mark Lawrence. Dude kept calling him a Moor. He said, "You Moor." <laughs> like, yo, 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 what's up with that? He said, "Yo," and he kept calling him that throughout the whole movie. And Martin said, "Look, I'm about to start hating this name Moor," and that's what happened. 
Mm -hmm. Same thing that happened in the cops community is the same thing that they showed you in Martin Lawrence in the movie The Black Knight. Mm -hmm. They started to hate the term war. So now you get Negroes talking about, I ain't no war, no what is. I'm black. You're lucky with that shit. <laughs> you black like your coat or you black like your pants? Right. I'm black, I'm black, I'm black like my computer. Which, which one is it? Which one? All right. So this is a sissy right here. St. Christ is a sissy. Now look at that here. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, there was no perms back in the days. For, for Albion. Right. For Albion. If you look at his beard and his hair on his head, that look rather curly to me. Can y'all see that? So Francis actually was a more. What they probably did was just lighten up his picture like they always did throughout history. Right? But they left his hair and his beard intact, in which that showed that he was a more. In fact, you see right here, this is Saint uh, Francis Xavier. What is his feature? Okay. Making sure that I'm, you know, that I'm not uh, crazy. <laughs> you know? And he's the co-founder of the Jesuits. Ooh. Yeah. Society of Jesus. It was a brother who founded it. Ain't that something? All right. So I showed you that uh, right here, we are the founders of everything there is. Even their history. All right, even their history. Ain't that something? All right. So from Latin Franciscus, inhabitant of France, Francis, got the surname. We come on down. All right. That's the shield or crescent. Right, so here you can see how Francis family's moved over time by selecting different census years. The um, Francis family name was found in the United States, the UK, Canada, and Scotland in 1920. The name, the most Francis families was found in the UK in 1891. In 1840, there were 174 families, uh, Francis families found in New York. This was about 22% of all recorded Francis in the United States. New York had the highest population of Francis families in 1840. All right, so um, this is um, my Francis, my cousins, my um, bloodline, first cousin, second cousin, third, fourth cousin, fourth, fourth of the cousins. Right here, the Francis line. All right. So, come on down. Yeah. So, a considerable portion, proportion of the blood of the Southern Negroes of the United States is unquestionably what Indian. So this is the aim report of the Bureau of American Ethnology. The aim report of the Bureau of American Ethnology. In other words, the census. So according to Europeans, you're not, um, you're not a part of Indian of an Indian nation if you do not have a legitimate ancestor on the door of So let's see about the Francis. This is the book of Jewish and crypto Jewish surnames. Again, Francis is a white Anglo Norman and Scottish surname meaning from France. It is a white set of clan Stuart. So Francis is the Stuart. And set means seven. So there's seven names on which that is attached to Stuart, and Francis is one of them. So now that shows you how okay, King James Stewart and the Stewart's bloodline is through the Francis. So here, typical of uh, the name is the Francis group who landed in Virginia. 
Virginia is what is considered the South, 1608. There was also a famous firm of Jewish silversmiths in Georgia named Francis, some of these Francis, and to marry with who? The Creek and the Church. It's all we. That's what I'm trying to show y'all. So whenever someone say, I'm just this, I'm just that, walk away from them. Please walk, please walk away from them. Leave them, leave their foolish asses. Don't be caught up in anything that they're talking about because they don't know and do enough research. They don't know. Right? Right. And we don't, like what I say, hey, who reads what, but it goes back. That's what Bobby used to say all the time. Yeah. You know, that was one of the videos back in the day. So, Right here, it states, this is from the Federal Depository of New York State, the Handbook of North American Indian, page 290. It states that among the reputed um, ancestors of the Aboriginal American Indians population, natives are who? Lords and Turks. Now, we just proved that because when you looked at the ancestry of the Cherokee, Moors and Turks was on them, right? See, this is how you prove who you are. So I'm just reading an article by Brian Wick. Or Wick. Um, Wick. Yeah, Wilkie. 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 Yeah, thank you, David. A Cherokee language instructor concerning the Cherokee and Berber connection. Here in an ex um, ex excerpt, if I have something to think about, right? Um, and it says, if I have something to think about if you're Cherokee yeah. next month. Is it concerning DNA testing, or I have to go through DNA test procedures? Old Cherokee migration legends suggest an ancient connection with the Berbers of North Africa, who Morocco. The Moors, the Berbers of a tribal people whose land once stretched from Mauritania on the Atlantic Ocean to Libya, going to the Mediterranean Sea, and are related to the Indonesians and Carthaginians. Remember, the Cherokee had all of this in there. So, this is my um, DNA joint. And it's talking about Moroccan, 20.66%, Ethiopian, 23.57%, Lumbee tribe. The Lumbee Indians are here in, um, in North Carolina, 24.01%, Mozambique, 24.12%, Yemen, 24%. 0.81%, Ethiopian Jewish, uh, which is Halashian, 25.62%, Egyptian, 26.66%, and Puerto Rican, 28.86%. So, that's just one side of the family. If you continue on, and matter of fact, um, the Mozabites people are who? A Berber ethnic group inhabiting the Mozart um, natural region in the northern Sahara in Algeria. So they are Berber. Remember the Cherokee and their Berber connection. So when you go to the Treaty with Comanche, it speaks about Treaty P uh, the P Treaty of the Comanche or Treaty of Washington, or also referred to as misnomer the Camp Home Treaty. Says the treaty with the Comanche and the Wichita Indians and their associated bands for the purpose of establishing and perpetuating peace and freedom friendship, excuse me, between the United States of America and the Comanche and the Wichita nations and their associated bands of tribes of Indians and between these nations of tribes and the is who the Cherokee, the Muscogee, which is the Creek, the Choctaw, which is the Washington again, the Osage, the Seneca, and part of the nations. Of tribes of Indians. The President of the United States has to accomplish this desired object and to aid therein. Appointed Governor M. Stokes and Buckley, um, Brigadier General, the United States Army, and F. W. Armstrong, Acting Superintendent, Western Territory Commission of the Parts of the United States, and the said Governor M. Stokes and Paul Buckley, um, M. Paul Buckley, Brigadier General. So it says mm -hmm. um, the chiefs and representatives of the Cherokee, the Scogee, 
Choctaw, Osage, Seneca, and Fort Clark nations that they tried to Indians and I have met with the chief warriors and representatives at the first at the tribe's first above name at Camp Right? So <clears throat> this is the Washington, you know. Once again, the Comanche, the Wichita Nation, the Cherokee, the Muscogee, the um, Choctaw, the Osage, the Seneca, and the Quapaw. So when it says that Dr. John Lee was raised on the Cherokee Reservation, the Cherokees was part of the Wichita Nation. This is what this just said in the Camp Holmes Tree. You get it? So now you come and see how the Osage and the Quat or the Quat Paw looks. It's the same language, but slight dialectical differences. The Osage and the Quat are what? Oh, let's see. Bam! Both are very dark skin. Right. Okay. Well, now, who are all these fake five dollar Indians that's up in up in Cherokee now? That's the chief of the Cherokee and everything. What's going on when the same people who is the Osage, the Quapa, who was part of the same Washington Nation that we was part of, and that we are still part of, <laughs> was dark skinned people, and all of a sudden they're not. No brown face. Right. <laughs> so we know that the Cherokee, the Choctaw, the Muscogee, which is the creek, is at least three of the five civilized tribes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so right here, Origin of the Indians. Read this book. You promised in your letter of October the 23rd, 1787, same year, y'all, to give me in next at large the projections of your philosophy on the descent of the Creek Indians from the Carthaginians. Supposed to have been separated from the Hanno fleet. Hanno fleet? Who's Hanno? That's Hannibal! Hannibal fleet is who formed the Creek. Hold up, just like the Phoenicians and the Carthaginians formed the Cherokee. The same people. The I shall be very glad to receive them and see nothing is possible in this conjecture. I am glad that he means to appeal to the similarity of language, which I consider as the strongest kind of proof there is possible to have given. I have somewhere read that the language of the ancient Carthaginians is still spoke by their descendants after the doubtless um, um, interior parts of Barbary, and the Barbary treaties, y'all, in which there was outlawed. To retire like by one. the conquering Arabs. If so, the vocabulary of their tongue can still be got. And if the friend who will work of the um, will get one of the Creek languages, the comparison will decide. He probably may have um, made progress in his business if he wishes any inquiries to be made on this side of the Atlantic. I offer him my services cheerfully. My wishes. Being like his to obtain the history of the American Aborigines. American Aborigines. So now we get the fact um, my grandmother's um, family surname, Butline, Francis, and we find what's getting uh, the Cherokee. Oh, this is the Cherokee, bless you. This is the Cherokee, it's Phoenician, Moor, Berber, Punic, Canaanite. Now, all these are the same people, you know, Jewish, which is actually Hebrew, Israelite. Melangian, Carthaginian, Turks, Greeks, which actually Minoans and created, um, Mesopotamian, Egyptian, North African, Nanako, and Guinea, all right, and Portuguese and Creole. These are actually all the same people. Nubian, Black, North Skinned people. So right here, Egyptian, Greek, Phoenician, and Hebrew origin of the Cherokee. This is written by um, Gates once again. He goes in it, Phoenician. On the Y chromosome side, all right, Canaanite region, all right. So this is the book you want to get to. It's the hidden ancestral identity of the American Negro. True Euro Americans dare not tell. But every black American family should know and never forget our Rodine America. In the book, we talked about the Cherokee Nation. When Columbus arrived in America in 1492, the continent was already populated by as many as 40 million people from 600 
on more Native American tribes. And many of them, the majority of them, look like us. So why on the Dulles Road, the name Francis pops up so many goddamn times? Send you Francis, Cherokee about blood. Nancy Francis, Cherokee about blood. Carrie Francis, Cherokee about blood. Cherokee about blood. Okay, all right. Chickasaw by the night, Chickasaw by the night, Chickasaw by the night, Creek by the night, Creek by the night, Creek by the night. And this is all Francis, y'all. Remember who did they mix in? The Francis mix in with? They mix in with the Creek and the Cherokee. Remember we showed you that earlier. All right? So, Creek, 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 Creek. And the Creek is creeping. Creek, 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 Creek. You see that? All right, creep, creep, keep going. So that is the Francis side. My grandmother, name was Francis, so that is her bloodline, the matriarchal bloodline, is Creek, Cherokee, and Chickasaw. And it showed you earlier that the Francis mixed in with the Creek and the um, Cherokee. So this is no coincidence. It's showing you the connections. See that? Over and over again, y'all. This, this is what we talk about, how you can connect this information. All right? So this is Crown Prince, who's on Tupac Bay. You know this Prince Ramesses, Abel Bay. He is a Clark, and he is named Clark. Here on a certificate of live birth, Ramses, Prince Ramses Abel Bay, now known or became known as Hutan Tupac Bay. His mom was Ewell Francis, or Franklin, excuse me, his father was Ewell Franklin Clark Jr., and his mother was Catherine Ardbell Clark, right? So he himself was a Clark. And we show that on the Declaration of Nationality for the United Nations of the Money and More, Exclusive to Clark Bay, Defecto, Incorrect, Elliot, Playborn, Clark. Ex Relations, Ramses, Abel Beck. All right, so this is his signature here, modified signature. This is his um, Empire Washington. And as you see, Prince Ramses Bay. His card, nationality card. This is his United Washington Indigenous nationality card. Prince Hutan Tupac Bay. By this time, he changed the seat and sit in the royal seat, 2003, in which that in 1999 he received the title Crown Prince of the Empire of Washington. We got the money and formed the United Washington. This is just some pictures of him. <clears throat> this is him with the Empress, Moriasi, Tierra, Washington, Turner Cogas, O'Neill Bay, the late Empress, Moriasi, who was her security guard, and in 1999, she bestowed upon him the title on his born day, June 7th, 1999, the Royal Imperial Title. Known as Tutan Tupac Bay, uh, as the Crown Prince, as he became known as. He was the Crown Prince. This is me here in our old store in Kevin, North Carolina, and me sitting in front of Prince Bay. You can see the video. You can see my wife on there, our son, Caesar, and a few more chiefs. Okay. Right. The title of the video is called Crown Prince Who's on Tupac Bay of the Empire Washington Founder of the United Washington Speakers. Thank you. 
He can book three of the Washington. When he spoke to various Indians and how they had nothing more. So all these Indians that they refer to as the first um, world Native Americans, notice that they have our blood in them. They have a remnant of our blood in them. We have more of that royal slash Native indigenous blood than they do. All right? They have some of our blood in which that gives them the ability in order to be on these reservations and accept the payouts, all right, from the government. We chose not to be on reservations. There was too many of us, as you just been seeing, there was 40 million of us. And allegedly, there's still only 40 million of us. Y'all know that, right? 500 years, ain't shit changed. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Niggas ain't have no babies. <laughs> they have no babies. All right. So right here, uh, we are not just Africans, but Black Native Americans. They belong to many confederations, including the Muscogee and Algonquin. Some of the tribal names include Choctaw, Tuscarora, Sikolan, um, um, Pata, Wokmak, um, Tamacro, which is the Yamacro, the Nanacos, the Kashita, the Seminole and Yamasee, <coughs> and then the few. The Black Native American tribes mainly belong to the Iroquois, Muscogee, and the Algonquin Confederacy. We know that because everybody I just showed was part of that. The Empress speaks about it. She said the Washington Empire has many descendants. All right? And she speaks of them. the 12 Shoshone tribes, the nations, Cherokee Creek, Chickasaw, Choctaw, Seminole, so called Fossil Tribe, Blackfoot, Arakara. Now, who's the Blackfoot? The Blackfoot actually is right here up the street. Um, they are known as the Hawaii Sakani Tribe. All right? This is why um, Tar Hill State, no one is called the Tar Hill State, is named after them. The Kiowa, the Mohawk, as we already showed you, the Yamasee, the Arawak, the Lumbee, as I am more than 70 percent um, Lumbee. Um, Monta, Nanako Wars, Nanaki, Finnish Malay, um, Lungeon, Mo Mohican, Comanche, Meeks Pierce, Nechi, um, Pani, um, Wapanao, um, Powhatan, um, Matapani, um, Jigasting, um, Osage, McMahon, Catawba, Tuscarora, there's many more tribal nations. Remember, we showed you. Treaty of Camp Holmes, where many of them were involved. <clears throat> so, this is Prophet Nova Dralee's mother, Eliza Turner, here to the left, pure blooded Washington Turnica. And this is his father, John Drew Quitman, full blooded Cherokee Choha. All right. So, upon the death of Anna Maria the King, um, King Louis the um, 17th, the titles of Louisiana, um, Duffy, and Regent, right, and Regent, um, Marquis de Maison Rouge was conveyed to the next line of the Imperial French Crown. Louis um, Francis Joseph de Bourbon, Prince de Conti, the son of Louis Francis de Bourbon. Prince de Conti, the daughter of Anna Maria and King Louis the 17th, married Louis 17th Joseph de Bourbon, Prince de Conti. At the second Marquis de Maison Rouge, Louis Francis Joseph de Bourbon became the recipient of both the Imperial Spanish Land Grants of 1762 and the Spanish Land Grants of Monroe, Louisiana. Within the death of Joseph E. Bourbon, his eldest son, Henry Joseph Turner, inherit, inherited the Mason Rouge estate. Henry Joseph Turner became the recipient of 1762 and 1795 Imperial Spanish Land Grants, making him the third Marquis de Mason Rouge. Henry Joseph Turner married Sarah Turner, Turnica, and from this union came their eldest son, 
Joseph and returned. Brought more keys and made some root. And then Timothy drew. All right, it was Prince in the fifth region. Mason did make some root by and through his mother, Eliza Turner, Turnica, the daughter of Sarah Turnica and Henry Joseph Turner. All right, Eliza Turnica married John A. Quitman, or Kitman, which is Kittawa, which is one of the five names of the chair. According to the oral statements of prophecy, uh, Prophet uh, Jali said, I am five, I am the fifth and the last prophet, and I'm five times more powerful than I was before. This is the reason why Nook Jali is referred to as a prophet, because he had land, which was the land of milk and honey, canon to us. Uh sorry, the biblical we call Israelites to unlock to unlock the allegorical petition character of Moses, whose story is based on Amin who tech the fourth, um uh, Amin, um to Go to. Moreover, Brother A. Wise Bay, Grand National Secretary, said that the prophet said, I did not tell anybody I was born at the, who my parents were because I didn't want people to make a shrine out of the place or make over my parents like was done with Joseph and Mary. <laughs> All right? Now, he was born here in North Carolina. In fact, near Clinton, North Carolina. On the Chaharvi Reservation, which are the remnants of the Cherokee. That's why he said he was raised on the Cherokee Reservation. I live 25 minutes away from, from, the, from the reservation. All right? Prophet of Jali is my cousin. <clears throat> so, as you see, Prophet of Drali was the fifth more key to make some rules. All right, so right here, January the 8th, 1886, Prophet of Drali, who's known as Sheikh Sharif Abdul Ali, was born to be Drew or Thomas Drew in the territory of North Carolina. He was born of, of Washington, Atlantica, Moore, and Kittawa. Extraction raised up on the Cherokee or Selegi, and in the we are Eniwa, or what is known as Kittawa, also referred to as Cherokee or Chahari Reservation, around the age of seven, with his father's people associated with the Smoky Mountain Native American Reservation um, near the city of Clinton in Simpson County, referred to as Simpson Buck County, non existent. In North Carolina Republic, however, there is a village called Simpson. Right, which is Greenville in Pitt County, North Carolina. The only said Indian reservation around is approximately 50 miles away, which is the Hawa um, from the Hawa, the Hawa on um, Sapani tribe, which is right up the street. Here. And they had the annual event, the Hawani on the Hawa on Sapani tribe, the Sapani tribe back in the event um, every year, too, which y'all can come to. Around March and April, area. All right, so here is John Gaston had been the sixth Marquis de Mason Rouge after Nova Drali, who had been the fifth Marquis de Mason Rouge. Right, that's very important. But well, Prince Bay technically was the seventh. Right, so right, the common perception that Indians never formed a substantial portion of North America told the slave population has in part its roots in the routine reclassification of Indians as black. It began shortly after the British moved towards the establishment of chattel model of slavery. This reclassification systematically broke Native Americans out of the official record. Here it is, Native American adoption, captivity, and slavery in changing context. This is the book of Jewish and crypto Jewish surnames. So we look at Clark, which is Prince Bay's last name. Clark is usually a British or Scottish surname, although it can be French, German, Spanish, or just another about any other origin to translate from that language. The term Clark. A cleric originally denotes a member of a religious order. However, as these were the only people who was taught to read and write, 
the term eventually came to refer to as a um, literate man. Thus, the name Clark may also refer to a scholar, a scribe, a secretary, or of a number of religious orders. Other variations of his family name include Clark, Clerk, and others. So, funny that Prince Bay was an ordained minister. <laughs> Reverend Reverend Steve A. Bay. Since the name Clark means that, and then certificate of ordination of the indigenous cosmic order of Melchizedek, Prince Bay was also the founder and member of, as well as I am. All right, so this is my family. On my mother's side of the clocks, first, second, third cousins, four cousins. And this is Prince Bay's brother, Alvin Clark, right here. And me and Alvin are third cousins, which makes his brother, Prince Bay, my third cousin. And his third cousin, one time removed relationship, half third cousin, half second cousin, twice removed, or second cousin, three times removed. So, this is them as brothers, as you see here, the similarities. Some more clocks, relationship. As you see, there's a lot. Of these clocks. <coughs> and Clark and Michigan. Huh? You mean can't the Clark's in Michigan? Probably so, no. I, I don't see, yeah. And, and who are the clocks here on the dogs roll? Cherokee, 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 Cherokee. This is by the light. Cherokee, 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 Cherokee. By the light. So Prince Bay is my third cousin. We already seen that the Francis were Cherokee, Creek, which is Muskogee, and Chickasaw. Now we see the Clark bloodline, which is majority Cherokee as well. And it keeps going. Pages and pages of clocks by Cherokee blood. So they Native Americans, Indians, how the hell they get names and which that we have? <clears throat> Anybody can tell me that? Yeah, I tell you, because you know, just showed you, because they mixed it. It's of Morris extraction, Indian extraction, Carthaginian extraction, on and on and on. You see? The one that's on the reservation <clears throat> now is mostly of European, <clears throat> of Albion, European extraction. These are what's called the five dollar Indians. They paid five dollars to get added to the dogs roll so they could receive benefits. So now they have taken over the reservation and they have kicked out the so-called dark skinned black Native Americans that they call themselves. So we line out the Indians like the ones that own the casinos and stuff then? Yeah. That's who that is. <coughs> so now they get so now they get <coughs> put it this way. They are one sixtieth percentage of Cherokee. What the hell is that? One sixtieth. Well, that means one out of sixty people. You got Cherokee right? Out of sixty people? Hold on, y'all. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm twenty percent Lumbee. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? So. Out of 20% now, maybe 20% out of 100 is how much? One out of five, right? So one out of five. So that means I got more native indigenous blood in me than the jokers who sitting at the helm to my day 116 to 160 and 132 and one. I'm like, huh? What the hell is that? And that's just that's just lumber. You see, family is Creek, Cherokee. <laughs> Chicken saw, as you see here, keep going on and on and on. 
Start here. In Chickasaw Nation by Mason, commenting, their complexion are of dark reddish brown or skin tan copper brown color. Don't sound like anybody that I've been seeing recently in them tribes. <laughs> sound like y'all. I can pull out a penny and we can put it on our skin and see how the various colors of the pennies all match everybody that's in this room. It don't match them. Put out a penny and put on it on their skin. You're like, oh, we got copper tone. We're a copper tone. That's the measurement Right, that's the measurement point. They used to use the brown paper bag. Now we're going to use the pen. <laughs> well, you don't pass the paper brown bag. Good. You don't pass the goddamn penny. Copper penny test. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Because he don't know that um, R1B or R1 blood type come from Africa. And they went up into Europe and populated the royal bloodline, as I've already shown. So he doesn't know that. He think R1, because he got R1 blood type, he think he's right. And he's a stupid ass fool who thinks that. So everybody who comes on, oh, you got slave. Oh, you was a slave. Oh, dude, the name Francis said meant free man. <laughs> so that means that there was no slave, really. At least through my maternal side. So what are you talking about? You see? This, this is the tricks that they that they pull. It. So here we have, you can see here, some more clocks. It was Chickasaw, Chickasaw, Chickasaw. So we've seen all the Cherokee. Now we've seen the Chickasaw legacy. Now you see Choctaw. Choctaw, right here. Or oh, this Choctaw. This Choctaw blood right here. All right? <clears throat> so the clocks is Choctaw, Cherokee, and Chickasaw. So, that's, so that means that we have Four of the five, four of the five civilized tribes. The Choctaw, the Creek, which is the Muscogee, the Cherokee, and the Chickasaw. Now I'm getting ready to show you the Seminole. So we got all five civilized tribes in the bloodline. Once again, how would the Clarks? Who is known by Christian <coughs> Jews, who is a, which is a Jewish name, Hebrew Israelite name. All right? How is it that this tribe, tribal name, is found in the Dos, on the Dos Road? Can I read this? This is your bloodline. This is you. And so when you say Seminole, it's a Jamaica. Exactly. One in the same. One in the same. Known as the Arawak. Mm -hmm. right. Same people. The Arawak, the Tayano, Wapanog. So, <clears throat> so, right here, Seminole Indian chiefs describing Negro. Uh oh. So, we showed you the Osage, the Quatpa, the Chickasaw, the Creek. All of them was dark skinned people, copper toned people. This is what it said, y'all, right? So now you see the Seminoles describing Negroes too. And here they are. Here they are. So see, we've been lied to. And who's the Seminoles? The Seminoles are the Yamasi. As we showed you earlier, this is, the, this is what the Yamasi, whatever a Seminole appears to be darker than his fellow, it is said that his Yamasi ancestry was shown. So the Yamasi was dark skinned people. Seminole Indians, once again, descendants of Georgia, South Carolina, Muscogee Creek tribes. So the Seminoles was part Creek and part Yamasi, in which that made them the Seminole. Who would into Jamaica to become the Maroons. Oh, 
right? In this book, the history of the African, is the book here, pass that around. Okay, so this book speaks about the setup of the government. That's why I showed it. So right here, the history of the African Omex, black civilization of America, from prehistoric times to the present era. Okay, this is what he says about the Yamasee. <clears throat> Among the other black nations who existed in the Americas before Columbus and long before Christ were the Yamasee, India, who had a large kingdom in the southeastern United States. Their descendants were among the first blacks of pre-colonial African um, American student in origin to fall victim to kidnapping for the purpose of enslavement. The descendants of the Yamasee are the millions of blacks who lived in Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and Northern Florida. Wow. Anybody getting this information? Are you tying this all together? And how they've been separated in order to make sure that you can never know? The Yamasee Indians or Yamasee, also referred to as the Amo um, Karikin or Amo Karis or Americaro, were listed among the 19 tribes as being of dark complexion, found widely scattered among the inhabitants of North and South America. They were assumed to be immigrants from Africa prior to the European discovery of America, whom Lucas um, Bequeath D. Elion persisted in slave hunting in Beaufort, South Carolina. Who's, who's in Beaufort, South Carolina? The Gullah Geechee people. So the Gullah Geechee people of the Yamasee in 1520. Elion refers to the Yamasee as Negroes being valuable laborers. This is in the book, Carolina Genesis Beyond the Color Line. So now we get to my father's side of the family, the Butlers, Washington, Turner, and Gaston, and the Moore bloodline. So the Empress states right here that she is part of the international, Imperial International Estate of the Bourbon Hash, Hash Bird Empire, which included Western Europe, the Netherlands, Belgium, <coughs> Luxembourg, Switzerland, Germany, Italy. Um, Sicily, Nepal, Nordina, Spain, and Portugal, as well as most of North America and Caribbean, in addition to Central and South America, and all of North America west of the Imperial Demarcation Line, 1713. All right, or British Royal Proclamation Line, 1763. This is the breakdown of the Royal Imperial bloodlines for the Washington Tropical Moors. The young Yaris to the French throne, King Louis the 17th married the young Yaris to the Washington Tourniquet throne in Maria. So, all right. Since the Empress is my third cousin on my father's side, then we have the same genealogy. And remember, third cousins um, shares a set of great great grandparents. Thus, I would demonstrate the royalty in our life. So when we find out, this is my royalty breakdown, and the same nations that were spoken of is in my bloodline as well. So we got the royal bloodline of the Scottish, as well as also the Ireland. We got the Danish, we got the Persian, we got England, we got ancient Egypt, we got the Alpad dynasty, all right, as you see, England royalty right there, Scottish royalty, Austrian royalty, Austria is the Hasburn, y'all, I'm going to show you that right now, ancient Egyptian 48.2%, this is just one part of the bloodline of the ancient Egyptians, um, here's a mummy from the um, Middle, Late, and um, Ptolemaic Kingdom. As you see here, genetic distance 24.077. 
sample match is 98% closer than the other users. So that means that they're 98% positive that I am from um, this bloodline of the ancient Egyptians. And so right here, we have now, now was an ancient Egyptian local governor in Minet Khufu in the middle of Egypt in the 12th dynastic period, right? During the 12th dynastic period. So, this is the rulers, and he ruled under Sinurat, the first, and Amenhat, the second. Right? This is 1791 to 1971 to 1926 BC. Alright? We're talking about maybe 4,000 years ago. 4,000 years ago. Though. So here we have the royal ties via the globe, and here it is um, ancient Egypt. The ancestral seat is the Valley of the Kings. Y DNA haplogroup is E L B E one B one A. Right. This is how I connect to <clears throat> not. This is him right here. This is him right here. <clears throat> And as you can obviously see, he's a brother. Okay. So this is my 4,000 year old cousin. <laughs> so right here, moderate DNA testing confirms the African characteristics of the two mothers. Right? His brother is Nati Unk, which is here. Right? This him right here. I'm linked to both of them, in particular him from the branch of M1A1, and it's a branch of the maternal tree of humankind. It's aged between 9,600 to 16,300 years. Age is approximately about 1,300 years ago. Right, This is the branch from around there. This line is also common in who? The Ethiopian Jews. So Ethiopian Jews and the Egyptians. Close indeed. Here it is, ancient Egypt, 96.1%. All right, that is now my connection to the royal ancestry of Ramesses III. Utsa Mayat Ra. Medi Amen, Ramesses III. Was the second pharaoh of the 12th, excuse me, of the 20th dynastic period in ancient Egypt. All right? Ramesses III. Now, who is Ramesses III? He's the son of King um, Sebnati and Queen Tai Marines. Although little is known of Ramesses III, well, Egyptologists believe Ramesses III was the great grand, was the grandson, excuse me, of the great Ramesses II. Who gave Moses hell? <laughs> but as you see him here, he's <clears throat> what? He's melanated then, melanated now. <laughs> and of course, it would have to be with 98.6% ancestry rate. It's only 100. <laughs> so, right here, he became king at the death of his father in March um, 1187 BC. And he would rule for over 31 years until approximately 15, um, 1151 BC. And the next three rulers was his sons, Ramesses the fourth, fifth, and sixth. All right. All right. This is Ramesses and his son, the Prince Amin Heru, um, Kepara Seth. So this DNA is E1B1A, all right? This is right here, the Valley of the Kings. And what's the Valley of the Kings? It's known as the Gate of the Kings, Valley of the Gates of the Kings. And if anybody watched Ashwa Quasi, then you've seen the Valley of the Kings. This is the Valley of the Kings, how it looks.
get the book of Ramesses the third, and he's the father of what? Look how you keep coming back to the same conclusions over and over again, y'all. It's all good. Yeah. Huh? Ramesses. Ramesses. The third. Ramosis. That's where the name Moses come from. I did my. Ramesses the third cousin. All right, cousin. What's up? <laughs> Let's see how many kids he had. Because obviously they came over here, right? Because we're here. Right? You know, there had to be a boat ride, something, something. It had to be a boat ride. It ain't come through. Man, I'm sorry, it ain't come through slave trade. <laughs> Sailors. Exactly. Well, let's go on. Let's, let's see how many kids he might have had. He had plenty, I'm sure. You see, he was in America. He's the father of America. We we here in America still. See? You think, uh, so remember, Ramsey, now remember, this is also through his children. You think they related to like the officers? You said, uh, oh, yeah. Stop <laughs> spoiling my shit. <laughs> Stop <laughs> spoiling it. I'm trying to. Like, <laughs> 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 Don't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So remember. His sons, as we've seen, Ramesses the fourth, fifth, and sixth, you know, they all had children. So that all leads back to him. Understand? So he had at least 10 sons and one daughter. Right? But he had three wives, Isis, TT, and Ta. All right? So um, you came from them, you know. You know what I'm saying? Brother sitting right here said, 23 and me told me, I have brought it too. I'm from. Ramesses the third. Exactly. Exactly. And Professor Walter Williams already told us that we was the ancient Egyptians. And this is what he meant by that. So once again, Ramesses the third is the father of ancient Africa. Oh, excuse me, of ancient America. So this is by R.A. Gerard Boyd. So here we come down. It says the chief claim to fame of Ramses III has been his conquest of the sea people. His temple walls at um, Medinet Habu depict the naval battle, the first such picture monumental. If Egypt are falling, then to the combined Mediterranean power is this why have been very different. But then again, had he not set the expedition to the far west of the world, which is here, the transformation of Mesoamerica would not have been not have come about and taken the turn that it did. When stock is taken of the achievements of the Pharaoh, Ramses III would have been recorded the double distinction, savior of Egypt and the father of Old Mexico. And the father of Old Mexico. Montezuma from the from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Triple Uh oh. Uh oh. So let's let's see. But we know now. Uh oh, this is ancient Egyptians. This is the ancient Egyptians, y'all. Remember, we, we part of the ancient Egyptians, and on the walls of ancient Egypt are the Twa people. With the helmets on, the same helmets on which that is worn by the Omex. So not only do I give you the connections, I break it down to the very last compound. You hear that sounds? A little bit of rational. But I would just say dramatical. Fresh, fresh. 2021. That's Curtis Wimber. 
Oh, okay. Same helmet. The same leather helmet get worn in the 1920s when they was playing football, but football came about. Mm -hmm. The Omex, the Nubians. Oh, shucky ducky. All right, so right here. Ambiguous among the Omex or Africoid types, nowhere but in Egypt at the time when the Levantine and Black Africans intermingled. The Colossus Omec heads clearly represents Africans. This is one of over a dozen so far ex um, excavated. All of them have broad nose, thick, fleshy lips, quite unlike the Native Americans or Native Indians. Examination of Omec skulls by Polish anthropologists has independently detected a strong Africoid element. Proof that shit, you can see that. Proof that they are not just African. But blacks from Egypt, Egypt, all right, is nowhere else at the time for African heads. And so, being that Ramses the Third is the father of the expedition, known of the Omex, and the father of the Mexican civilization, this is the heads. So when they say that um, that there's no heads like this, like the Omex in Egypt, wrong. Here we are, right here. Here it is, right here. Here they are, here it is. The Ramesses had Nubians from Tanis, which was the port for which expedition were sent on the Mediterranean. The resemblance extends to the incised um, parallel lines of the leather helmets. The other undoubted stamp of Egypt is that nowhere else at the time the Colossus sculpture is being carved and transported miles from the quarry. Here they was brought 50 miles through some of them weighed as much as 40 tons. The powerful Portraits testify that they are persons in authority. The techniques so these nearly 17 heads that have been found in Mexico. 17 heads. Some say that it was actually 22 and coming back up. Some of the other ones. <laughs> but about 17 of them has been found and excavated in Mexico. And these are the royal bloodline of the Egyptian Nubians who built the pyramids in Mexico. And I have the documentation of Jesus telling us that, that he's a liar. And he tells you, come straight out and tell you, oh no, 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 the liberals, um, they know, the Egyptian, Egyptian, the liberal Egyptians did that, and, uh, you know, the African, my family and friends, the Africans did that. So let's show that right quick. Because, you know, I hate having a debate with Negroes when I'm so goddamn thorough, but it happens. <laughs> I can tell you that for real. Negro, if you're trying to invade this information, I'm like, I ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> this is right hemisphere thinking here. This ain't left hemisphere thinking. <coughs> they try so hard to do their thing. Right. He's up a book and, and a picture. Because mm -hmm. there ain't no books. <laughs> and to all the, we've been to all the museums. Into all the museums around the world, you the, the, uh, the most important ones. Right? Right. And nothing exists except for a goddamn drawing. I'm sorry. That's all you get. That's all you get. And they say um, there was a book called um, um, Hugh Yetta. <coughs> but even then, um, that boat uh, looked like it might have only held 10 people. Okay. Yeah. So, Ooh. can't do better than this. <coughs> I'm not saying slavery didn't happen. I'm just saying that it didn't happen with the real thing. Morris and Lawyer that I was last time. He had a video to where he said uh, there's a manifest, they're just out here, they're all out here. Nobody ever talks about the Avian slaves. Oh, well, I do. Exactly. Every time somebody wants to argue with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, no argument. But you can't defeat this information, so all you can do is harass them. All of them are going to say, oh, yeah, fake watch the toy. Yeah, okay. You ain't got shit to prove it otherwise.
give me a second. Of all the civilizations that been related of the origin of man in America, is the whole theory that says that over a very straight came groups of people that were ethnic. But when they got to the Gulf of Mexico, they find a group of people called Homeless. In the Venta, La Venta in San Lorenzo was big colossal heads, Tabasco. The features were not were not European Asian as they thought, but there were a combined combined features. Slanted eyes, high thick chin bones, with wide noses, lips, foreheads, and curly hair very close to the skull. They said, What happened here? There's an old, old <laughs> speculation that says that the Europeans weren't the first to come to America. We well, have evidence of Chinese being in Mexico many yes. years before they, they yes, came. Right. And then we have, we think, we strongly no, speculate no, no. that the black Egyptians, he, called Nubians, Nubians. great yes. sailors, yes. great yes. Yes. Say, uh, yes. warriors, could have had, you know, could have had right. you know, the ability to do it oppositely. Instead of from this side of Africa over, they went from the other point around. Found the current came over, and many of them came and decided to stay. That's, right. That's why we see the mixture of immigrating groups. They decided to stay. They decided to stay. Come on, guys. 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 Come on, when did he when did he admit to that? This is 2013. And he said something happened four years before that in which that caused him to have to tell the truth. I said, yeah, Obama became president. So why aren't they telling the truth now? Because they ain't got no choice. We're the gods. We're the goddesses now. We need time. It's time to wait. <laughs> so right here, this is the other one. Wait, wait, wait. We, we, we suffer because they're not. Yeah, they lie. There's no more lies. No more lies. Yeah. Right. That's how we set free now. So right here, let's go to the second one. And you're going to talk to the Europeans and us at the same time now. So, so he ain't playing, buddy. He ain't playing. It's the same dude? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Something occurred. Slanted eyes, high thick chin bones, white foreheads, but white noses, white lips, and curly hair close to the skull, like our friends, Afro friends from Africa. What happened? What happened? How did these people become this way? What occurred in the history of the sentiment of this new world that today? We still speculate, and every day more evidence is being found. But this is simply what happened to you is when I went to school, because I went to the university to do this series, I went to the Autonomous University of Yucatan and I majored in anthropological sciences oh, and history. I know about you. Put him in raw, make raw, the pilgrims, uh -oh. Thanksgiving Day, not just three Turkey, and the 13 colonies, New York should be called the You some continuous. Today, history 
has been dug out of the ground in all the American continent, proving that long before the Europeans came to America, other people were coming to this world. We have evidence that Chinese were already teaching these indigenous groups of how to make things sparkle from sulfur. We have sulfur mines in Central Mexico. The Spanish properly said that when they got to a city in Mexico City called Cholula, city of Mexico, central Mexico, that they were amazed that these people greeted them with fireworks, the sparkles of sulfur. Sulfur. And if the Chinese were here, why not think the following? And when I went to school, there's a strong, strong speculation about the origin of the Olmecas that says that the Olmecas were black Egyptians coming over to America. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. The Indians have found their way on the opposite side. We all know that everybody thinks that came from Africa. So that they came opposite around, got to a current of water that washed them into a new world. And as they came, they started to, maybe at the beginning, commercialize. That's why in Egypt, tobacco was found among the mummies. How did tobacco get to Egypt? But it's only up on her. Nubian merchant coming, encountering, finding a new world that they were not interested in conquering. Just coming and taking back things unknown to them. Maybe some of them stay and got mixed with these groups that were coming from the very space. Over in this mixture resulted in the only civilization. The ones that truly say there is a all the vast knowledge that we know about these civilizations. I must, I must share with you that in archaeology in Mexico, it is they, the ones that began the skill and knowledge that we know of the morality, yes. astronomy, yes. written languages, yes. organization, yes. is from them, yes. passed it on to other that don't yes. So we can say that we can call the great, 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 great grandfathers of all the cultures of Mexico are going to be saying, take it off your mind, take it off your mind, Vasco. And go see in a place called La Venta in San Lorenzo, the colossal layers of the Olympics. So wow. why did you say, wow, That's how right. can this be? He's still alive, though. Who's that? He said that, um, what did he say? Everybody was coming over from Africa. Instead of saying that there were people already here in America and also. Of, of course, but they, that's fine. As long as, he, as long as he tells you the connection. But it still shows our ancient Egyptian side. All right. We got we how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen of us sitting right here, and two of us already been proven to have what? Of the ancient Egyptians, of what? Of Ramses the Third. That means more than likely. Yeah, I looked Just up a comb. That one goes to the same Hasbro family too. The sons of Tom. See? Yeah. See? So that's what I'm talking about. I got about 50, 60 um, royal um, bloodlines of different areas throughout Europe, throughout the Caribbean, into America and Africa. So this is showing up. And this is this is what is showing up. The technique of monumental stones carved in that system that's going to be for the Omega thing. I now think that some among the Nubian crew may have been ship captains. Okay. All right? Right. Remember that the leader of the um Heshashepsut punt. Um now, now remember they wore the helmets of the Omex when they played football, when they bought football about in 1920, right? Right? And what do they call when they hit the ball? Point. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so the Hesheshepsut punt expedition was called Nahasi, the Nubian. We know also that on Ramesses III's punt expedition were ships, captains, inspectors, and petty officers. To conclude with the aid of text and comparative evidence from both sides, I have seen um, I have been able to surmise where, um, who were some of the people that looked part of the great voyage to the West. They included the Egyptian priests, Nubians, and Levantines. So, the Levantines or the Hebrew Israelites, the Levi, 
Really? It's with this, yeah, yeah, this, this, yeah, yeah. The Leviticus all talking about the Levites, the, Le the Leviticus priests, the Hebrews, the Israelites, and the Nubians and the Egyptian priests all came over to this peace. <laughs> you see, this, this is this is this is oh, this is how you tie this shit up. You don't leave no loophole for anyone to say anything otherwise, all right? So you continue on. So in my book, Pre-Colonialization of the Americas by African Moors, I teach that is um, archaeological fact that the ancient Kushites were a colony of Ethiopia and Egyptians that colonized portions of West Africa, Samaria, China, and the Americas. So here we have the late period of ancient Egypt, 650 BC. We have Roy lineage to even that time. Remember, we say E1B1A DNA. Well, who's the E1B1A also being that we found that it was connected to Ramses III? Well, here it is. The haplo group is found predominantly among the Bantu Negroes, descended to include, but not limited to, the African Limba. Right? Many of the West African tribes, the Igbo Jews, the Yoruba Jews, American, um, African Americans, West Indians, Brazilians, Haitians, and other Negro influenced races throughout the Caribbean and scattered across all different nations. Contrary to false DNA reports, this is not a sub Saharan or hemetic haplogroup. It is a Semitic in origin. Negroes have been identified as being exempt from the bloodline of Ham per the Zodaran Compact Bible Dictionary. This haplogroup represents the Y DNA of Jacob, the father of the 12 tribes of. Israel. Wow. So the E1B1A blood is not just Ramses the third, but also of the Hebrew Israelites. Uh oh, so much for the Hebrew Israelites saying that they ain't African and Egyptian. Uh oh. What are they You know, you let African do that come on. Um, <laughs> on uh, on uh, um, like D.L. Hughley, uh oh, <laughs> Dr. Yahshua bin Ephraim. So, the Jew a Negro? Yes. <laughs> Being the studies of the Jewish ancestry for a partial standpoint. That's right, be impartial, um, Arthur Abernathy Talmich. All right. This is what it says. It's affirmed that the Amani were originally a colony of the Egyptians and Ethiopians, which is Kushite show, which is Nubian, and that they spoke a language composed of words from both these nations. It is elsewhere, uh oh, down that they shown that the Jews and Egyptians had what? What's in that? Uh oh. Let me see. <laughs> Was born from his father from a marriage between the Hebrew Israelite and the ancient Egyptian. Huh. Wow. Here we have another incident of Egyptians in turn being interwed to the Ethiopians, of course, they were the Nubians. The Nubian Egyptian, as the Mayan Jesus just said. So, Professor Walter Williams states that we are the ancient Egyptians, and he's absolutely correct. Um, and he says that the word Mor or Mir is a nickname, you know, given to the descendants of the Egyptians. No, the name that's a nickname for the Egyptians is not Mor, it is Gypsy. That's the nickname. So when you read about the Gypsies in Europe, that's those who are. Egyptian heritage and brother. And there was the followers of Amin Raqqa, uh, Amin Raqqa, which becomes America. Amin Raqqa. America. You get it? You get it? Ah. So, since the Egyptians came over here and I just proved it, who was their deity? 
America, which is America, which is America. That's the deity. Amen. This is named this world or this part of the hemisphere, the Americas, is named after Amen. This is why at the end of the prayers we say what? Amen. Whether you're a Christian, Muslim, or Jew, you say what? Amen. You see this? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, conclude and give everything, everything. So here you go, the blood type again. DB one A one A. There it is again. And who's that for? The Moors. Oh shit. Sorry. All those who want to debate, which I already ended this debate before in 2009, so I want to end it again in 2021. I just showed you that we are the ancient Egyptians. I just showed you that we are the Hebrew Israelites. I'm showing you that we are the Moors. All the same goddamn blood type. Or, not blood type, DNA type. Let me show you that. Again. <coughs> All the same DNA type. Now, right here. Moors, Cordoba, Caliphat. The Caliphat or the Caliphs in Arabic. That means the rulers. The Caliphs. They are the right, they are the rulers. So these are the Moorish rulers. This is my ancestry once again. So we just showed you coming from ancient Egypt, Hebrew Israelites, to the Moors, same blood type, I mean same student, same DNA type. Come on. This is this this is the debate. Oh wait, Negroes are going around talking about, oh, hey, you're a Moor. Are you okay? <laughs> you might not be. You ain't doing no ancestry tap in order to find that out. <laughs> so right here. This is happening the University of Granada. Remember, Granada was one of the last, strong, last strongholds, right? In Spain. Genetic analysis, there it is, genetic analysis of the human remains found at the site had been led, um, led the researchers to conclude that the North African presence in Iberia had been present for centuries before the Peninsula Islamic Conquest, which started in the 8th century AD. Genetic um, data also indicates strong ancestral lineage from the Eastern Mediterranean or Levant. No, it was the Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites again from out of Canaan. He was the Canaanites, Carthaginians, Phoenicians, which could have made its way to Iberia either independently or through North African populations. These are the Moors, you know, Cordoba. So nobody can say differently, right? This, this is the thickness of all of this. All right? So as you see here, Egyptian, Palestinian, um, Samaritan, um, Bedouin, Jordan, Samarian, Levite tribe, that's a Levantin. Um, um, the Yemen, the Yemen um, Jewish people. And then you come down, you have the Libyan, the, Lib the Libyan Jewish people. You have the Turnish or Tarshinian Jewish people, and you have the, um, once again, the Samaritan, um, the Samaritan Levite tribe. You have Coptic Egyptians. Also, all of this, you're talking about the bloodline, when you put in Coptic Egyptian into it. So, E-M2 is formerly known as E1B1A, is a human Y-chromosome DNA haplogroup. Right? I won't go for all of this right here. It's actually reproduced um, a lot of the European bloodlines, Hungarian, African, Orpan dynasty. There's no different in this than the Hasbro or other nearby royal European families. 
right? So, get to the Ashburg, House of the Hab, from Ashburg, right? English spelling, you can see here, it was also known as the House of Austria, right? I showed you earlier that the royal bloodline was similar to the Austrian, almost 10%. So, it goes back to um, the Ashburg, and then, which is also the growth of the Holy Roman Empire. Which continuously occupied by the Hatchbergs from 1440 until their extinction, probably in the male line of 1740. Is that true? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> they, they're, they're, they're here sitting here, but they say they have Hatchberg um, um, heritage too. Yeah. So, y'all sitting here. It's funny because I did all this research. Uh... December 10th, I believe it was. Yeah. I sat down and read the same thing that you read, Son of Thomas, all of that. Mm -hmm. Goes back to uh, mm -hmm. King Arthur and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my last name is Combs, and I, I read all that with you. Yeah, it's funny. And that's Scottish. The same homework. Yeah. And that's Scottish, Scottish which homework. leads back to yeah. Skoda, Queen Skoda, which is ancient Egyptian. The Queen Skoda. Several times into parallel branches, most um, consequently in the mid 16th century, between the Spanish and Austrian branches, following the um, abdication of Charles V. Charles V. Remember him? Remember, he was, he, he, he's one of the most important members of the Habsburg family. Right, so, <coughs> so. Allegedly, that was the last of the bloodline in 1740, and then the house of the Habsburg still existed. <laughs> How is that possible? Ended in 1740, but they still exist. Come on, man. You, you see, you see the nonsense that they play. <clears throat> see, that's their separation of us. That the Habsburgs came over here <laughs> and set up their bloodline here. Cause how else could we be here if that didn't happen? I should be in Egypt. <laughs> Or in Jordan. You, you see what I'm saying? I should still be in those places, according to the bloodline list, but how I got here. Of all it is. See, this, this, these people are a joke when it comes to real scholarship. So they're also called the Hofburg. Right? As you see, it's formerly principal in Riverview Palace of the Habsburg dynasty. So let's look at the Hofburg. There it is. Uh oh, our family was up in there, y'all. Look at that shit right there. Now, you know, that is actually Tartarian Moorish built, right? Okay. Just got to make that clear. Uh oh, this is Charles V right here to the left. Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, y'all, 1500, This is him. Oh, but they had to do this in order to throw you off the track. To the right. Oh. His daughter, that's Maria Asperger of Austria. This is his daughter. You can see her features. Huh? She got braids and locks in her hair, y'all. Can you see them? Okay. People are also calling him the Great Lord. Yeah. The Holy Roman Empire, Maria of Austria, daughter of Charles V. Wife since 1548 of Emperor Maximilian II. All right.
Okay? Actually, he's the grandfather of Charles V. Her father was King Leopold I. This is King Leopold right here. Look at them lips. I ain't got to say nothing else, do I? I ain't got to say nothing else. So this is the great grandfather. This is the grandfather of King Leopold right here. Damn thing so dark, you can barely see him. Okay? I just, I just, I just, I just, it's so dark. All right? All right? Y'all can't see this one too well either. God damn. I might have it too. No, no. But this appeared the French kings, according to antiquity, ancient history was black, even from the beginning. This is um, Charlemagne, um, um, Charlemagne, you know, not Charlemagne the God, but Ch Charlemagne uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the Black, or the Moor, as we would say, right? All right, this is him. Again, can y'all see that a little bit better? All right. Oh, you yeah. see them lips, oh, yeah. the hair. Okay, Leopold. Yeah. He, he got a mane like a lion. Yeah. Leopold. Right? Holy Roman Emperor Leopold the First. Right? This is actually on a coin. Uh oh. Uh oh. Drake. Yeah, Drake. Right. Drake, exactly. All right. So this is Black European King Philip II of Spain. Philip was born in. Um, Philip Ole, the son of King Charles V. Okay, you see, this is this, this is the son. Look at the hair, the wavy hair. You know what I'm saying? Skin, you know, you know, he's a brother. All right, and his consort Isabella of Portugal. This, all right, all right, Isabella of Portugal. All right, Spain was the foremost Western European power. Under his rule, Spain reached the height of influence and power directly in sport explorations all around the world. Ay, 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 ay. And uh, settling the um, colonialization, colonialization of territories in all the known continents. In 1554, he married Queen Mary I of England. All right? Now, Joan, Archduchess of Austria. Infant of Castile and Aragon. Hold up, remember if you see the movie of Aragon. All right, about the dragons and shit. But this is who was over it. And look at him. Huh? Look at the lips and that nose and that hair. What is she? She's a war. There's no doubt about that. All right, served as a regent of Spain for her brother, King Philip II of Spain. So this is brother and sister right here. Brother and sister. Moors. Brother and sister. Right. If you have Fernandez the first and his son Maximilian the second. Now hold up, who was um chilling with Maximilian the second? As you see, he's a brother. Uh oh, oh let's let's go back up to Max. So who was chilling with Maximilian? Oh Mackie. Oh Mackie. He was Mackie. <clears throat> Right here. Thus, Queen Maria, Hasbrook of Austria. All right. She was what? The daughter of Charles V, wife of who? Emperor Maximilian the second. So she was a more, as you see here, and he is a more, as you see. Here. This is daddy. This is son. That's Maximilian II, the prince at that time, who became king. What's the face you teach us right now? Exactly. Exactly. That's not European. Even the brother next to him. <laughs> right, you just like skin. And that's him. That's, that's Philip the first. Landgrave, Count of Hesse. As in Jesse, Hesse, all right, for the first. <laughs> all right, this is another picture of him right here to the right, for the first. Now, you, you can definitely tell by now as he got older, what is it? 
right, look at that hair. You got the hair balled up like, like you know, like brothers be wearing nowadays. The little locks and shit. Exactly. You come on now. Y'all know. Right here, Holy Roman Emperor Matheson, Archduke of Austria. He got a little wavy hair, but you can tell who he is, though. You can tell who he is. Uh oh, you, if you couldn't, um, Elector of Saxony, uh, uh, Maurice. The word Maurice means more, and shit, you can tell he is. He got his little hair on um, like little locks. He already yeah. started his little locks going. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, y'all got to know what's up. All right? Look, look at the brother here. This is a pope, y'all. Who is he? Oh, yeah. he, he? He's the pope. Pope Eugene the Fourth. Who is What do you look like? What do you look like? <laughs> okay. <laughs> exactly. So born Gabriel um, Condolomor. He was born in Venice to a rich Russian family. <coughs> they must have money? Yeah. Pope Gregory the 12th was his maternal uncle. He was Pope from 1431 to his death in 1447. He is the last Pope to take the name Eugene upon his election. This is all part of the Hashburg, y'all. You know? This is Elector Frederick or Frederick III, the wise of Saxony. <clears throat> what do you look like? Hmm? Can you tell that he's a brother? Okay. And look what our symbol was. The Phoenix. Our symbol was the Phoenix Dean. Our symbol is on our flag now as the Phoenix. Uh-oh. What about them? <laughs> huh? Can you tell? This is Mary, this is Margaret of Austria. Right? Margaret of Austria. Right? Her father is Emperor Maximilian and Mariam. Right? This is Philip II, surnamed the handsome or the good, was the Duke of Sabre from 1497 until his death. He was the son of Philip. All right? Of Filippo. All right? Right here. And the junior family of the Ducel family and his first wife, Margaret of Bourbon, as in the Bourbon estate. Mm. All right? Here, here goes some more, y'all. Oh, now. Can y'all tell that they melanate? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay. <laughs> this is Dorothy, or Dorothea, right? Princess of Denmark. Oh, you ain't know we ruled Denmark too, did you? <laughs> Duchess of Persia. You ain't know we ruled Persia either. I told you, these are the names <coughs> when we looked up earlier of the Moors and where they ruled. These are the Moors that I'm going now by the names of the Moors who actually ruled these places. She was the daughter of King Frederick I of Denmark and, and um, Anna of Brandenburg. She married Duke Albert of Persia. Now, who is Duke Albert? Oh, shit, here he is. So, this is him right next to her. Did you see him? Hold on, let's, let's go back up. Did you see him? So, these two moles got married. Y'all see that? These two moles got married, y'all. Oh, shit. Now. There's a little more empire going on. It's called the Hashburg. And we are still rather the residue of that. Since they claiming that we done got ghosts since 1740. I'm a damn male ear right here. I need to claim all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Albert of um, Persia, the first Duke of the Duchy of Prussia, on the 37th Grand Master of the um, um, Teutonic Knights. Is he for Freemasonry? All right. This is uh, Frederico, uh, or Francisco um, Gonzaga, all right? Marquis of Italy, all right? Light skin, but you can tell he still got some melanin up there. All right? This here is um, Ippolita, um, Gonzaga, the daughter of him, and you can tell right here what's going on with her. Just look at her head. She got the hair braided all over and everything, all right? Still melanated, y'all. Still coming out. All right? Now, you can't tell. This is Charles the Fourth, the Holy Roman Empress, and his third wife, Anna um, B. Swatswinnik. 
All right. Now, look at her. You can clear, you can clearly see that she is sister, that she's melanated. There's no way around that. It's like her face jumps out the picture at you. His doesn't do that. But it looks like her face is just like, boom, hey. <laughs> exactly, right? Now, these are the ones who they claim is on the bloodline now. But yet, at the same time, they said, oh, no, the bloodline died in 1740. Yeah, where are they? Can't oh, can't have it both ways, can you? Somebody's lying. I think they need to change Wikipedia. So whatever happened to their estates? I think they we operate on the estates. I think just like they said, we got to reclaim all of this. All right, so the Empress said that she's from the Hashburg, so that means she's descended from the same. I'm descended from the guy and the goddess, the twins right here, they descended from same thing. So, and of course, when y'all do those, I'm pretty sure you're gonna find the same information because it's no coincidence that we all into the same information. So it means there has to be some type of genetic bloodline tie on which that attaches all of this at the same time for us at this particular time of awakening. Anybody over saying that? All right, I'm just using me as an illustration. All right, so who are the Washington? Well, we are the Aborigines, the dark-skinned, bushy-headed, um, original inhabitants of so-called North and South America, Mu or af -mu We have been referred to as the pre-Columbian civilization, the prehistoric mound builders, um, the, um, the Dustiny, the diggers, the Asiatics, the tribe of Shabazz, the people of the wilderness, the lost tribe, all right? You see that? The lost tribe, mm. um, the big buffalo people, and the ancient ones. Certified legal documents of colonial Spain and French invaders, explorers, all right? Explorers, explorers, identified us as the ancient indigenous or inhabitants or occupants. We are the imperial watchdog. Nation of mound building moors akin to the Omex, who I just showed you were who? The Omex were the expedition of the Egyptian priests, the Nubians, and the Hebrew Israelites, <laughs> who was the Carthaginians, the Phoenicians. So, why are you called the Empire? Well, Washington Turnica Moors are noble people of imperial bloodline. Moors developed one of the first known civilization in government. We operated, right? We operated um, according to the laws of the uh, almighty creator of the universe. All right, so. All right, right here. The creator, divine guidance, place a woman over the family, the nation, and the empire. Washington D. Degamaya has an oral legacy of over 10,000 years of rulership by emphasis. The creator anointed the woman as the lawgiver and the man as the law enforcer. Our maternal imperial ruler or rule complies with God's order of humanity or humankind. Um, the imperial Washington nation is our sovereign governing authority. D. Degamaya is our empire and Washington war is our divine nationality. There is only one race of people amongst the Washington, the human race. So as you see here, Prophet Jali is carrying the woman, which embedded inside of her is humanity. So he's bringing the woman or lifting the woman back up. And how you uplift all the humanity is first by lifting the woman. The emperors of the Washington is the fulfillment of the prophecies. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. The Honorable Prophet Noble Jali, born the appointed of Washington, um, uh, Washington Moore, Timothy Trump, foretold of the salvation of humanity, right? Symbolized by the woman rise to her rightful place. 
He illustrated this by portraying himself carrying salvation or humanity to safety, civilized by a woman. Our Empress has continued the divine national mission set forth by all the prophets. Right? So right here. He said, Larry, Philip the best, best top, best rock of the beginning of the unrest accumulated with the French Revolution. His Majesty, the King of Spain, Uncle of D, made some rules, made a deal with the Burgundy Bastrop to transport his nephew to the so called New World for fear of his life. So the Europeans say that he died at 10 years old, which is Louis the. Um, Louis the, uh, 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 well, I think Louis the 14th, that he allegedly died at the age of 10. But really, his uncle got him the hell up out of Dodge. Because he was up and trying to kill him, right? Bingo, he was trying to kill him. I, I was watching that same, man, I was watching that same document too. And, it, and when they played it out, they had also called Europeans playing the parts. So we didn't know what feelings they were talking about. But right. like you said, you got to have this history of yourself right. and see what's going on. Right. I saw that too. Exactly. Got to have it. What was the name of that uh, I don't know. I watched it on 2B TV. I had to go in there and find the document because I was watching documentaries. And they usually put it out there for us to watch because we don't care about that stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. So, since they brought them here, they brought them to what is known now as the French slash Spanish territory, all right? They brought them to Louisiana, all right? Named after Luis, all right? So right here, Henry Turner is the child of the Marquise de Mesa Rouge by the Imperial Washington woman, Her Highness St. Clair, um, um, Sarin L, and the New Rio. The discovery of her Egyptian like coffin is recorded or recounted in Return of the Ancient Ones. Go to go the Egyptian thing again. That's what we're telling you. Right? One of the old empresses, the Alfred Kim Washington, Washington, right? This is who she is here. Today, the Empress is one of the living heirs of the Henry Turner. Has recovered the title of 68,883 acres, comprising most of the northern part of the said states of Louisiana. The United States, though this land was not part of the Louisiana Purchase, it was never ceded to them. They simply tried to steal it by murdering the rightful owners. They claim it is public domain. In all, there are nearly three million acres to legally belong to the Washington as part of the Mason Rouge Grant. And then you get up into um, Canada to act for my 30 minutes. The terms of the Mason Rouge land grant simply stipulates no Americans were be admitted or established on these lands. In other words, United States citizens. This was a deliberate act to ensure the rights of French and Spanish nobilities to their title and land. All right? <clears throat> so this right here is actually the treaty Right, these are the treaties, the claim of the Marquis de Maison Rouge. These are the treaties. Yes, and plus, it's in my book, Return of the Ancient Ones, as well as also in the Empress book, Return, oh, excuse me, Return of the Ancient Ones in the Empress book, and also in my book, The First World. So, right here, this is United States Plaintiff in Era versus Richard King and Daniel W. Cox, defendants. Now, who are they? Well, right here, these are the same family lines that was on. Let's see if I can put that up so. All right. So this is the state of Louisiana, Division of Administrative State Land Office. And what did they say January the 8th, which is on Prophet Number Draw Lee's Born Day, 1992? This is Radiasi Gaston, Empress of the Washington. Mesa Rouge Grant, 
What it says, on January the 8th, 1992, your request for cancellation is issued relative to edu um, education um, for unpaid property taxes for the year 1848 in Washington Parish, Louisiana, in the names of who? 10,000 acres to Daniel W. Cox. All right? These are the names. So you see Henry Turner, you see Daniel Cox, and you also see Eliza Turner, which is Eliza Quick, who is Prophet of Israel's mother. She had 1,036 acres on Mason Rouge Grant. This is a total of 68,883 acres of land that was returned. So this is the United States case. You can look this up. United States plaintiff in error versus Richard King and Daniel W. Cobb. Defendant. Can you go back up for This is 1845, y'all. January. Go back with it. Right there. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right. But they can't do it because we never pay taxes to begin with. The land is already ours. 68,883 acres going for 3 million and actually a total of 30 million, over 30 million. So continuing her quest to bring light to um, bring truth to light, Empress Maria Tierra, Washington Attorney for Gas on El Bay, because 40 years of working on um, work included research as um, archivist in order to locate documents and treaties concerning land known as the Wash as the Washington proper, this known as the Louisiana Purchase, which her people All right, or identified as the ancient ones. The emperor said that the land was never included in any land deal, that it was not part of the Louisiana Purchase when sold by Spain to France in 1803 when France rolled it over to the United States of America. She writes, President Thomas Jefferson was well aware of this fraud, a fraudulent land deal, and stated his sentiments at the time. In truth, the land spoken of has never been part of the, of the United States of America. It has always belonged to the ancient ones. It sounds like the same land President Abraham Lincoln was going to return to the Moors after slavery. He called it the Egypt of the West, or the Central America, the land between the Rockies and the Allegheny, all right? Mountains from the Gulf of Mexico all up into Canada and on both sides of the Mississippi. In 1848, the Washington, also Washington and Turnica nations took their land case before the United States um, court and won their case under Judge Tanny, the same judge who in 1856 gave his opinion which was not a legal decision in the tragic Dred Scott case, which basically stated that there's nothing a black man has that a white man is trying to respect. The result of this opinion meant further slavery and death to the Washington Turnica and other nations. They were murdered by tens of thousands enslaved and ran off their land. Their names were changed to hide the truth of their history. The Washington became Washington and the Turnica became Turnica. All right? So, um, I'm going to end that right there. Any questions about anything that we've gone over tonight? Everybody understand what happened? Who we are? Okay. Well, go ahead, guys. I, know, I, know, I see I see your mind clicking, <laughs> turning. What, what's up? No, the massive payments that, that was that went on, especially mm -hmm. during the black folks. That, that was to get rid of us and get up on the land. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That was still there. Mm -hmm. That's what that was. So all the information, actually a lot of that stuff, a lot of that stuff, but a lot of it happened actually in Africa and Europe. And then it actually continued over here. Well, the information. So mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <coughs> for those um, for those states, because those states never died. Right. They never died. Like so, all the rest that the long curl states are just floating and they're abandoned, but nobody's going to visit. And that, so that would resurrect that 
you, you claim it based on your heritage. So, right. So, I show my because the Empress is my third cousin on my father's side. I show my lineage because it's the exact same lineage. So it comes from the Ashburgs, the um, Ashburgs down. You know what I'm saying? Into the various other um, royal families who mixed in through Louis the Fourteenth. You know what I'm saying? And so forth and so on. And um. You know, just count those connections. Actually, out. the 17th, I keep saying 14th, but it's the 17th. Excuse just me. drawing the documents up and attaching them to like what we have about the State Department will be enough. It should be. And because all, because all the title would have to be correct. Right. Because if it's a mistake, you have to have to be the exact same. Right. Just a trust, and you have to be the trustee. Right. The title would have to be right. Well, well, actually, you would be the beneficiaries because you'd be the heirs. So who's going to execute for that? The execution, the execution would have to come through somebody who we trust. Exactly. To be the trustee. <laughs> okay, no doubt about it. And then if you could find your family's name on the dog roll, like look, 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 look how we just combining all the information and taking all the land back. It automatically, that's how you do it. It would, it would, it would never ever function, but through every time, first of all, whenever, whenever there was treaties established, they would come. It was all about coming to right. doing business. Mm -hmm. Sums it up. Right. If you can see through that part right there, mm -hmm. you know what you have to be able to make the heritage, but you can't claim it unless right. you show some type of proof. And that is mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. so that's, that's why I can show proof. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. I've gone through at least shit, they made 10 websites of heritage in order to put all this information together and tie these historical connections. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I've read hundreds and thousands of books. You know what I'm saying? So I've been able to get the books, the pages of the books, the titles of the books, the historical significance, how it ties into the bloodline. And so we can go back and do the logo. We use the same logo that the families. Exactly. Same price. Mm -hmm. Change it. Mm -hmm. No need to. You just need to occupy the vacancy. Right. Right, since they claim that the shit ended in 1740. Well, I got proof that it did end. I want to know little jokes. <laughs> right. So let me, I'm going to go on and occupy that seat right quick. Because you got the blood line here. Can't nobody tell you you can't. It's the only, only way they would be able to deny you is to try and record it. Right, and they can't. But they don't even have jurisdiction. Right, right, right. right. It all comes from our participation in what we consider to be alive with. Right now, they got us consistent in the body, so we are more physical than spiritual right now. Right. If we can gather back that spiritual existence, which goes into our DNA, which goes into our legal memory, if we can get legal memory of who we was and who we are, that's how you stop the game. Because right now in our legal memory, oh, I'm a crip, oh, I'm a blood, oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a science pan. You know what I'm saying? Some silly shit. Some silly shit all day. So if we can get that legal memory out of us and put what's supposed to be in us, that's how you get the ball rolling. That's all it is, a legal memory. Right. Well, that's why I do these videos. I'm the only one that really does it like this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? On the whole YouTube. And I'm like, dude, why, why ain't nobody doing it? Everybody on Dane Calloway, everybody on, you know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah, all these different videos. people. And yeah. I'm like, yo, they're not, they not showing you the connection because they try to ostracize and get you to follow their agenda. Yep. I don't got an agenda. I'm trying to show you who you are worldwide. You are a worldly people. Now to establish the legality of the school, I need to use one thing. Um, where's the real man? Oh, what particular? You don't want to know what it's at this point. I mean, it comes from the legal <laughs> memory. The right. legal right. memory. Right. You got to take the will, you got to take the trust. Created. Just like you that's, said, it's under communism. It's under real, communism. But the thing that people don't understand is that heaven, I'm uh, uh, Israel, so heaven, you know, there's an order to it. So as you, if, I, don't, I don't even know how to explain it. Basically, karma is at play. The ball is already rolling. So if you were a righteous person and you just actually, you know, you've actually been a good spirit and you have no proof and stuff, heaven will support you on your journey towards that. If that's, if that's yours, if you're supposed to have it. It, 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 it will happen, but if you're not, it's not going to happen. That's true, though. Yeah, it goes back to the six scrolls. Right. Yeah. That's true. That's true, though. Yeah, here it is. You look like you're out 
Oh. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Uh, a little bit. I feel like to restore the balance, they have to be fair. Ooh. Everybody's going to be Either that or the whole plan. But you don't know who they make. Nobody gets nothing. I know I'm going to do that. That's the one that's going to work on one Because every time they have a meeting, they do like, all of the things, every time it's all Everything, everything. And the government that they're operating is a sister mother government which deals with political social affairs which deals with the majority of the social classes that was created by our families under the feudalism law that was created by our families right. so if they took us out of this way of living then we are considered chattel we are considered booty to them right so then everything falls into the another hands of another man's position like mama if we don't know how to cook the eggs mama got to come in and do all the authority we, we lost those eggs. Those mamas, for real. You know what I'm saying? That's what's going on. We got to take back our, our uh, what you would call it, legal affairs, a social and political authorities on this planet. And that's right now the guy's dealing with the moralities. What you're wearing, what do you want to eat, that silly stuff. It's called majority. We got to come to majority again. We're, we're, we're in a minor position. We put ourselves in a minor position of a, under error of uh, memory. And that's what's going on. The, 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 uh, like you said, the inheritance goes through the blood. The blood is tied to the land. So the, the inhabitants of the land, that's in their blood. So if they're not controlling the affairs, if they're running around playing with the bananas all day, guess who's going to control the affairs? The communism ones, the ones that see the business out of it. It's, I'm just trying to show it how it's supposed to be. Yeah, 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 that's true, bro. You know what I'm saying? So we got to get back on our business. That's a little Both of y'all saying that. That's, that's the key. Both of y'all saying we need to get back on our business. And that's what we're going to consider. Appoint a trustee. We wouldn't have to worry about appointing somebody to trust because the trustee of interest is going to give him the power. That's how we're going to do it. 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 That's how we're going
What's the pyramid set? The overnight. Do we have any overnight? Oh, here it is. This is the location of America that will rewrite everybody's history. I and I also got the chills. I don't know at first. Oh, yes. Is he still going to do that? He's doing it right now? Y'all want to go? Yeah, no. She can. She can. They're looking for an archaeological site with all of the stones and stuff. In it. That's oh. what I told you about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the book was supposed to come to me. Uh huh. Hey, man. Just looking for the button. Oh, 